next virtual Benedetti session. I'm Gethin Jones and I am absolutely delighted to have been asked to interview these two wonderful human beings, the most talented sister violin partnership I've ever encountered in my life. Uh, let's say a big hello to, well, you might know one already because she's been busy this morning in the workshops. Hello, Nikki, and hello, Steph. Hi! <laughs> Look at that, you even do that in unison, it's impressive. Um, I was just saying, it's already been a busy morning, isn't it, Nick? With uh, what we started the celebration weekend, you've had the rhythm warm up. There's been a bit of uh, Paganini. There's been um, like family fun as well. It's all going off this weekend, isn't it? Yes, there's a whole lot of stuff going off, going going on, <laughs> going off and going on. Hey, before we get into it, though, listen, uh, you two, uh, let's quickly talk about lockdown. What's it been like? Because I imagine you've been very busy for very different reasons, right, Steph? You've got a little one to look after now. I do. She is six and a half months, nearly seven months. <laughs> Feels like seven years. <laughs> no, she's amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's amazing how, I mean, it's the best thing I've ever done, but it is incredible how she does take up every minute of my day. And just, you, I didn't realise how much you have to think about the next thing and the next thing, the next thing, where she going to feed? Can she started on, it's really dull, but she started on solids. No, and you think exciting. you're going to start, you're going to start making all her food. And I think we've got to oh clear that. And she, it's just like mind blown. But yeah, yeah she's I, great. She's amazing. She's sleeping. That, that's my sister sounding like such a mum. Like it's... <laughs> But you're proud, started you? on solids. She started I on solids. No, <laughs> it's so weird. It's, um, I do have so much empathy for, for parents who have had to become teachers overnight with homeschooling and, of course, looking after their children too. Nick, you're yeah. traveling all the time and now you're locked down. It must be quite hard that you don't get to see your little niece as much as you want to. Oh, it, I mean, I'm, I see her probably like. A, an, on average, ten photos a day, maybe something like that. <laughs> no, it's not actually. Do you want them? Oh no, no. Every every day, I send Steph a message going. Co well, what do I call her? Puds. 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 She's pudding. She's a pudding. We call pudding. her pudding because she's just like <laughs> a little pudding. Yeah, she's, she's pudding. just a little pudding. But every day, I just ask for um, like loads of photos, and then of course get get non-asked for photos from mum like loads and loads of screenshots of sienna but um no i it's it's yeah it's it's very strange to think how much she will have changed by the time i actually see her oh. next it's a bit, of a, a bit of a weird feeling actually i um, but you like you try not to i i, I don't know I've, we've not been too overly sentimental about it i think steph we've no. just been like yeah yeah that's just how it is. So. Hmm. Well, I think we're so used to being apart anyway. And yeah. especially with mum, with you, like, we're also used to being apart. It's kind of how we communicate anyway. So, it's, I mean, apart from, yeah. Mum and dad, are they, I bet they're missing her too. Yeah, a lot, yeah, a okay. lot. Dad sings the same thing to her every morning. <laughs> and she's actually started to, you know, dad and his yeah. singing. Yeah. Oh, so sing me? Well, well. Uh, no. I might, but a lot of people might not, Steph. So what do you mean by that? <laughs> what does he say? Uh, something like, uh, I, do you know, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to one cornetto. It. <laughs> no. It's it. something, they are, they are, Have a little sing song now. Come on. It's a musical Twinkle above workshop. us and twinkle below or something. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. That one. You go. <laughs> you twinkle above us. You twinkle, you twinkle below. You <laughs> twinkle. But he says it in this really broken, weird accent. Twinkle below. And she just looks at us. <laughs> Oh, it's you. <laughs> I'm sure she's loving it. Um, you mentioned just there that like you, you're used to being apart, right? But as kids, that wasn't the case, was it? You, you were quite close for you. Would that be fair to say, Nick? Uh, oh, we've we've been close regardless. Like it, even so, we both left um, Scotland at the same time. So I was ten and Steph was fourteen, and um, obviously at two we were at two different music schools. Um, but I, I think we, we've never had a period of time where we've actually, even if we've been separate, that we've actually like grown apart in any way. No, I mean, we've just, yeah. we've just, we've been unbelievably close the whole time. Yeah. So there's, there's never been that time of like 
I don't know. I mean, I think it can happen to some siblings sometime. You question your closeness, but I don't think we've ever really had that, even though yeah. we both play the same instrument and we could have just like, I know. Who, um, who picked up the violin first? Well, the story is apparently I was four and um, I saw it, heard it, I don't know, I'm not sure. But then I, I be basically begged mum, I wanted to play the violin. Really? And uh, yeah, and then mum was like, no, because she just had Nicola. Mm. I think she was quite difficult as a baby. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I heard that too. <laughs> You're really difficult, so mom yeah. didn't want a crying baby and a violin. The violin was not <laughs> going to help that situation, was it? <laughs> so basically, um, I begged her for four years, wait, and then when I was eight, um, and obviously being the older sister, Nicola wanted to copy me. <laughs> so oh, then we really? started. So, so w were you a proper keynote with the violin stuff? It was you that wanted to play, and Nick um, not so much? Um, I don't think it was a case of Nick not so much. I think apparently Nicola's first violin lesson, she said, I'll only play, to send some said to my mum, I'll only play if you leave the room. <laughs> so, oh, really? something like that. Do so, have, yeah. Do you have any recollection of that at all, Nick? I, well, I, I'm wondering if that was like, are you sure that's right, Steph? Um, that, that, I, that, I, that I said that I would, I, th I thought it was something like I'd gone to some dance class actually and that yeah I think it was a dance but it was, class. No but there was something with the violin lesson as well. Yeah I, don't, I think I was going, I went through a little phase of um, not wanting, I'm um, not wanting mom to be there or something. I don't know why that would be the case. I definitely well, no, don't do you know remember what? that at that's, all. That's really interesting because I've known you what since, uh, I've known you what 16, 17 years now Nick and I think it's really weird because we see you up there performing in front of massive stages, huge crowds, but there is that you do have that, you are very humble with it. You know, you're not sort of a show off with it at all. You're quite quiet with it, aren't you? It's interesting that obviously came from, you know, the first time you picked up the violin, Steph's smiling. I don't know why we'll get to that in a minute, but you, you, you still <laughs> feel like- It's just cute. It's just yeah, really cute. It she is, is though, very cute. It? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you never really sort of, um, change from that Nick even though your life has changed massively in terms of performing well I think um that's you wouldn't have a choice with mum would you Seth like no. you don't ha you don't have the choice of being of, of even remotely believing you're special at anything <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrible She's not here to defend herself. <laughs> no, but it's, but it's no, I know true. what you mean. I know what you mean. She never sort of let you get ahead of yourself. Oh, uh, no. In that respect. No. no. So you always Definitely have that discipline. Not. Steph, I mean, Steph, talk about it. It's what, t tell t tell it's, us what mum what was like. You know, she, I mean, she just wouldn't, wouldn't let you think that you're... It was just always... You, everybody's it has to work hard at what they do and... Yeah, I mean, you make it sound really bad. <laughs> But it wasn't like that. We're not emotionally scarred for the rest of our lives. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no, I think she, I think her motto was just, you just, you know, when you work hard and you do well, obviously she will, she will, she, she, she gave us so much love. Yeah. But yeah, it wasn't this, it wasn't this kind of... Um, it's, it's, it's almost like a mix of Scottish groundingness with the Italian sort of performance side and, you know, expression almost, isn't it? That's that's how I always saw her, saw her. Both your parents, actually. Yeah, <laughs> our parents. <laughs> well, you know. Well, I think, or... do you know what? I think we take, we were always told to take things seriously, but at the same time, we don't necessarily take our, yeah. take things seriously, yeah. if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. It was, we take it's ourselves not... too seriously. Yeah. yeah, it was like, you know, we were never punished for making mistakes or, you know, just living our lives it was just do something do it well but you will do something and do it well yeah uh, which, <laughs> you know? which, which you've both done quick question did you did you duet together on the violin as uh, when you were youngsters at all was that a thing yeah, yeah. We, did. yeah we did yeah we, uh, yeah we did we did quite a few i mean the nature of um 
how we both studied when we were young. So we studied with the same teacher and doing Suzuki method. And obviously that like requires you to play in big groups together. So we did all sorts of things that were like that. Um, and we had, uh, yeah, we've got footage of the two of us like playing in a group, in a, in a big group together. Yeah, because we started basically on the same day. Yeah, yeah. That um, the Suzuki stuff as a as a as a child watching it just blew my mind. It was just sort of really ahead of its time, wasn't it? In terms of, is it right that sometimes you learn without music? You you learn music with feel rather than notes and stuff like that. And they were playing the same violin sometimes. It was it was incredible to watch. Uh, have you um, integrated some of that into this weekend, Nick, at all with workshops and stuff? Are there ideas from your past being used this weekend? Uh, yeah, no, there, there's quite, there's a couple of teachers actually that are, are really strong Suzuki uh, trained um, and, and I think definitely just the sense of playing together yeah. and the feeling of playing together is, is one of those things that Suzuki I think does, does give you. There's those big kind of come together moments mm -hmm. and what, what's there? He's screaming. <laughs> screaming? Oh, Sienna's screaming. Oh, the baby. Can I just, in two seconds, yeah. just got to run and get Sienna. Okay, go on. There she is. Oh, there she is, Sienna. <laughs> Buongiorno. Little cutie. Oh, she wants oh. in on the action. She's a performer, like her mum and her auntie. Yeah, I think she's so. Oh, really thank you. Great. Thank you for joining us, Sienna. We were oh, talking Sienna, about... th this is your first TV... <gasps> Appearance. This is an exclusive. Look, she's happy about it. Look. Yeah. Are you going to sit there and be good? Yeah. She yes. recognises uh, Auntie Nick's uh, <clears throat> voice there down down the Zoom, doesn't she? Right. Let's just sit here and just be good. Yeah. <laughs> Are you enjoy being a mother, um, Steph? I love it. Do you? I mean, she has made it really easy actually from day dot because she's yeah. always slept really well. I don't know. But uh, she has been it's amazing, yeah. and she's so fun, her. and she's, it's just, it's amazing. I, I, I mean, I'm, of course I miss playing, and I'm still going to carry on with all that, but as much as I can, but it's the best thing I've ever done, best thing ever. Um, whilst we're talking about family, and I'm, I'm surrounded by the Benedetti family right now, let's, little, let's talk a little bit about sort of family growing up, and I think one thing I've always noticed about you two is how supportive you've been of, of each other. But first of all, very different careers, Steph. Like, your path was very different to Nick's. Can you explain what you've been involved with and, and, and what's been happening since, since those um, days you used to shout at Nicola in Suzuki? Yeah, so um, I studied at Royal College. And then kind of after that, I found myself just freelancing, doing random things. And then I, then I had a quartet. Um, then I started doing a lot of work with an orchestra. And then... Yeah, and then I've got, um, I'm in a Scala, the string quartet, and also part of Clean Bandit. So I was Clean just slipped in band. there casually, part of Clean Bandit. So I played violin for them, um, and yeah, it's been amazing, absolutely amazing. Some of the things we've done, it, uh, yeah, I feel... I, saw, um, I remember seeing Hyde Park in particular. Where I was so yeah. heavily pregnant. Oh, but I mean, Were what you a there, gig. Gethin? No, 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 I didn't get Oh, sick. you just saw it online. Oh, I was so pregnant and so hot yeah. and thought I was going to fall off my stilts that I was wearing. I said, like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Why am I not in trainers? <laughs> Listen, this, I, I'm sorry to interrupt the interview, but I, I, it's part of me that does want to be in Clean Bandit. So I was thinking, whilst you're on maternity, could I maybe take up? So I brought my violin here. And oh. um, I, I could have a little go at Rockabye. Yes. Oh, can I do this? All right. You can give me scores out of 10. Um, I did, would it, what note does it start on? C. So it's a, a C, C. Up, up third position but from it, the E. Oh, no, no, I don't want to, because if I do that, oh, is that the start of it? I just want to do that. <laughs> can I do that? If I do an E, it'll be. That sounded great. Right, right. See, I was loving it. I think it's Sienna's like, who is this? <laughs> who is this? Oh, oh, come on. Try, try, try. Oh, is that? That's it. 
When I was pregnant, um, because the when we do that piece, uh, that piece, that song, um, I start like that, and uh, one of the singers always used to dedicate it to the new baby. Oh, I love love that. Yeah, yeah, Um, and and just on that. The reason I wanted to mention it is because I think, you know, when I was growing up, it was all about classical music, wasn't it? It's was about the classical and romantic um, years and all, all the rest of it. But isn't it lovely to be able to sort of use the violin in that way? It's become really fashionable over the last sort of five, ten years, isn't it, Steph? To be able to yeah. play these sort of classical crossover pieces or, or, or rock pieces, um, which is obviously something you took to and enjoyed. I think I just always loved different genres of music and also I lo- always love playing in groups and part of something like yeah. that's what I always love doing yeah. and I just kind of fell into it so I, I think I did a I did a, a live line session for them um and it was just like a, another session gig um and then they asked me to kind of start with them um but yeah I just yeah it's great I, yeah. I mean I love it it's so much fun it's yeah, so I- much fun and I know, Nick, you love what you do, but is it, do you love that side of the, the violin as well? We all know you for the performances that you're able to do, anything from Scottish folklore to just an Elga, whatever it may be, the heavy sort of classical yeah. stuff. But do you enjoy that sort of fun pop stuff as well? I, I, it's like not anything I have any experience in doing. And actually, if I do try to play, for example, the things that Steph plays, I actually feel, not only do I feel like a bit self-conscious, but I actually feel like I sound really awful playing that stuff. <laughs> like, because it, because it's a, it's a real specific way of playing that's got to be really exactly in time. Whereas, like, classical music is quite sort of free time-wise. Like, it's constantly, you're moving forward and back all the time. But, but, but to play those songs, like, you've got to be so metronomic. And I can see how Steph's, develop the way she plays it like over over that period like over the time that she's been doing that like it's a really specific way of playing so yeah. I actually like the the times that I've tried basically just to copy what she's doing <laughs> I always feel really um like I'm co- I don't know how to do this yeah. no, it's because this- you're always playing to a click so you have obviously your in ears you have to play to a click and there's one there's one bit in the set that we do where um I play Vivaldi oh yeah I, I know have that to play one to a click yeah I have to play to a click so I mean the amount of times I was rushing just obviously you've got adrenaline you know it's your little bit and then I'm like <laughs> I was like what oh, <laughs> and it's like. <laughs> But, um, but it, going back to the course this weekend, there's so much to think about, isn't it? To be a performer in, in any sense. Because if it's a live TV show, you've got the timings, like you mentioned, Nick, when you're doing what you're yeah. doing, different orchestra, different conductor. There's a lot to think about. It's not just about picking up the violin and playing, right? No, and, and I think totally different things for, for both of us. But, um, <clears throat> I mean, Steph, Steph will openly say to me, like, I'll be like, I've got to play <clears throat> such and such a concerto in half an hour. And she'll be like... I can't, I can't I'd imagine rather, anything I'd rather not be here. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, she, she just said to me, like, this, you, couldn't, you couldn't pay me enough to do what you're about to do, because she just d- wouldn't enjoy doing that, you know? Is it, do you not enjoy the practice step or the actual music? <laughs> no, I love practicing. <laughs> <laughs> I love the music. Nothing will beat that. Nothing yeah. will beat it. Um, I just have lots of fun doing what I do. You do, I think but, he has but lots let, of let, fun doing what she does. But in fairness, <laughs> Nick, we all know how much Nick practices and her discipline with practice, don't we? She's she's absolutely religious with it. You have to be, don't you, Nick? <clears throat> well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Um, I definitely I've gone through my years of being extremely disciplined and and diligent. I think after you get to a certain point, you kind of rely a bit on all of those years that you've had playing. And it's actually such a relief, like in the last maybe year or two, to be like, to know that you don't have to put in all of those hours in order for something to work or for something to be okay. Um, But it's just... Um, it's, I mean, like me and Steph have both talked about that when you, when you 
leave the studying parameters obviously you're 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 so reliant on your teacher for such a long time um mm-hmm. that you're constantly like oh can i do this or should i do that and actually get into that point where you're like well of course i can find my own way of doing this i'm just yeah. gonna tr- i'm just gonna do it this way yeah you know and as you said you've talked about that quite a bit yeah like, after after college i kind of i think i mean i loved it i loved it i love college but I think I felt so restricted in so many ways and I got too paranoid about every minute detail where I I wasn't playing how I could play. I I got stuck. Um, And then it wasn't for a few years after that when I kind of found my own way of getting around things. I was like, actually, I I think I just got better. That's pretty cool. That's good. You're expanding on the knowledge that you have, haven't you? Yeah, Um, definitely. I know we don't have much time together, but I'm sorry to to interrupt. I was just wondering, just touch on one thing, because we're calling this session Sister Sister. Can you talk a little bit about how supportive or how important that support has been to each other in your respective careers, Steph? I mean, she is the most amazing. So, God, I'm going to (laughs) cry. I'm going to cry, don't I know, she's the most incredible <laughs> sister. If you cry, I'll cry, and then Sienna will cry, <laughs> and it will just be a disaster. <laughs> so I was like, what? No, she has been, she is the most supportive, incredible sister, no matter what I've done. And she is, she has got the biggest heart, and any, oh, stop it. <laughs> um, and anyone who says she seems like such a nice girl, she truly is the most special person in the world. And I've never known anyone work harder for other people and a greater good and of course I'm going to support everything she does every time she gets on that stage I well up and I'm in the audience in tears so I can't believe that's my little sister you know yeah, it's incredible I, I'm, I've never I've, I've never there's never been a day where I haven't been proud of her maybe when I was a bit younger maybe a little bit jealous because <laughs> she was because she was <laughs> four years younger don't <laughs> spoil it Steph me. Steph you're oh, doing God. so well stop talking <laughs> <laughs> don't spoil it um, oh It's interesting that you mentioned about um, wanting to do things for other people because essentially that's why we're having this conversation. This whole weekend is about uniting and inspiring the next generations of musicians, whichever way they want to go in their careers. And I know, Nick, you know, uh, you've had lonely times with travel. It's not always easy. It's not always as glamorous as people think it is when you're there in a beautiful ball ground gown in New York's Carnegie Hall. You know, there were tough times too. So what about the support you've had from your big sis? Oh, like, um, ugh, I'm getting emotional as well. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think, um, like, a lot of people would see two, two siblings doing the, playing the same instrument and going in different directions. And would they, so many people imagine so many different things. And actually, I've never, ever had anything but support from Steph. Like, I mean, I, I, oh, I think it's because we're apart that's making me upset. <laughs> it's horrible. Sorry, sorry. Oh I'm dear. Thanks, um, sorry, it's the heat, isn't it? Yeah. No, but no, I think I, I think um... the I think the fact you're quite emotional talking about it probably proves the point. And I'm just trying to ask because you can't always do this kind of stuff on your own. You do need that support network, don't you? No, and 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 honestly, like I think back to the the times when when I was maybe 16, 17, 18, like all three young musicians. I mean, Steph was backstage doing my hair, just always that kind of voice of, of total, like, like, you know, when I would get into my, like, obsessive states of mind, Steph would just be the, the one that would snap me out of it. And also mum was always, if she felt worried about something, or she didn't know what was going on, Steph, Steph's the one. Trust Steph's, trust Steph's ears, trust Steph's point of view. She's always that kind of voice of just re- realism and just um, like, will just kind of kick you out of nonsense or like going down a, a, yeah. the wrong kind of thought path. And, yeah. um, you know, and I just, the, 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 through those times when I was doing many things for the very first time, Steph was just there all the time and and any any conception that people would have about any kind of rivalry or jealousy or whatever like never from her to me was there anything ever like that and and I think you know the differences in our personalities have, and then the similarities have been a blessing in our in our yeah. relationship because yeah. it's, it's you know, allowed for there's, that there's no point I mean jealousy is obviously a very natural emotion and you shouldn't 
feel bad for feeling it but at the same time there's just no point what does it gain it gains nothing just love and support whoever you are closest to and that's the best thing you can do and you will feel a better person for it well right, said. Well, since, <laughs> since the first time i met nicola uh, and we did a duet on blue peter together, i'll I never think, forget that i think we did the rondo i'm still fuming that she made me play second violin but that's another story <laughs> Um, I can vouch for the fact you've been very supportive of each other and I think that's probably been testament to both your successes. Um, the weekend is, is flat out. I know we're in a rush to get on to the next thing. Superb teachers, brilliant workshops, uh, some amazing conductors coming in there from all over the world, I think. Um, I know being part of an orchestra gave me some amazing opportunities to meet people, to travel the world as well. Uh, and I know you're so passionate about this project, Nick, and I know you won't do this, so I'm going to do it for you. Um, all the details of the Benedetti Foundation uh, are online here and you can make a donation. As it's fair to say right now with what's going on with the virus and everything else, I know there's a lot of people who need <laughs> funds, but um, you know, it'd be nice to think that there is a future for these children when it comes to music because of the opportunities it does provide. So if you've got a few quid extra, please have a look and donate to the foundation if you can. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I've been told to wrap up, which means it's now time for you two to stop talking but to start playing. You're doing a little bit of a duet. Are you allowed to tell me anything about it before you perform it? Oh, hi, the do. <laughs> oh, hi, the do. <laughs> so it's, it's not rock a yeah, it's, it's not Elga. Scot- what are you doing? Is it Scottish? It's not Elga, it's Scottish, yeah. It's, we're, um, we're going to play a tune that um, we played for the first, I think I played for the first time with Ali Bain in Scotland. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then Steph and I have played it privately so many times for our family in private you know like just personal kind of circumstances and I think this is the first time we've ever played it publicly so this yeah. is a little bit of a, an exclusive. I love that I think it is it um, Homecoming uh, the Scottish fantasy album was, was yeah. uh, probably my favourite I don't know why I just think the way it was recorded the songs and Mine too. play it in the background and I think being Welsh I don't know it just always made me think of home even though uh, it was Scotland, you know, it's beautiful. So this will be very exciting. Uh, obviously, Steph has to um, maybe pass on one thing she's holding to be able to pick up the other thing she needs to hold. So we'll probably take a few minutes, but do not go anywhere because up next, it's the Benedetti duet. See you soon. Bye, guys. See you soon. Thank bye. you so much. Thank, Thank you. Bye. bye.